All right, welcome back to another week of uh, Lunches Teacher Edition. I'm trying to do this and it's, it's so windy out. It's like 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour, and it literally sounds like someone's rolling up like a cart on the roof. Meanwhile, it's just the wind. So this week, I'm just gonna do uh, soups all, all uh, week for lunch, or at least all the ones I'm gonna show you and the five of them for lunch. Um, it's winter, it's cold, even here in uh, Phoenix, it's pretty chilly. Uh, and I'm gonna start it off today with my favorite, and that is the 10 vegetable soup. This is the Instant Pot version, and it's absolutely delicious. Let me show you what I got right here. All right, you can see my soup here. This is my 10 vegetable soup, and I've got plenty of it. Uh, I've got the, you see the chickpeas in there and uh, the tomatoes, uh, the corn, the, uh, the peas, uh, there's the, uh, is it barley? I forget, I believe it's barley in there. This is just a whole bowl of goodness right here. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. All right, so this is a hearty meal. It is a 50-50 plate or bowl or whatever you want to call it. Um, everything's just built right in and it reheats really well. So let me give this a shot. I just heated it up in the microwave. I just reheated it for two minutes and 30 seconds. Mmm, man, this soup is so good. Still one of my favorites. I feel like this is the one recipe that people just comment on all the time, this 10 vegetable soup. It's a knockoff of the Panera uh, 10 vegetable soup but it's oil free. Even the one at Panera, Panera is pretty low in fat, so I don't think they use a lot of oil, but I've, I've used all whole food uh, ingredients here, so I know it's good. Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. Ooh. There's just a huge spoonful of vegetables in every bite. <laughs> the wind is blowing the door back and forth. Oh, so good. So I've been working really hard to uh, some of my classes are dual enrollment with one of the local colleges. So when the kids are sitting in, I need my bricky water. When the kids are sitting in uh, my classroom, they're sitting in the local college class and they get college credit. Well, I've got these two networking classes, networking one and two, which does uh, kind of a network uh, intro to networking class. And that's a dual enrollment class. And then I've got this networking three and four class, which is a routing and switching class. And that used to be a dual enrollment class, but then a lot of people have changed like places at the college that we do this with. And then they decided, well, we're not gonna be a dual enrollment class. We're not even gonna offer this class anymore. So it can't be a dual enrollment class. And one of the ways it works is if I offer the same class they offer, right? That I can set it up as a dual enrollment class. So they decided that they're not gonna offer this class anymore. And I was like, well, uh, I've got the students sitting in the class that they're gonna pay your tuition, right? Cause it's a dual enrollment class. And you don't even have to turn the electric on. Like, they're over here, right? All you have to do is collect that tuition money. What do you mean you're not offering the class? Like, what is there to offer, right? So we've been going back and forth. And I started this process. This was a class we started in January this semester. And I, start, I knew this was going to take a long time because the other ones took a long time. So we started this process in October to get this class for January done. And they just told me yesterday, OK, we're going to offer it. It's approved. <laughs> I swear, to get anything done in education, you have to like, you know, you just have to keep going. Like, it's impossible to get anything done. Like, it's so easy to give up. But it's my kids, I'm not giving up. I want them to have college credits, right, if they're sitting here. So that's all taken care of. So now, all my classes that are supposed to be dual enrollment are. This one was not, and uh, the kids were gonna lose eight college credits for this class. Uh, but I was able to make it happen. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and I uh, just wanted to share that with you, so, all right. All right, so I brought some other stuff for lunch today, too. I already ate the banana, and I've got a sumo orange, which I don't think I'm gonna get to right now, but Tim cut up some fresh cantaloupe, so I'm gonna try that. Oh, wow, it's ripe. Mmm, so good. You'll notice I always have fruit. I. I'm still struggling with weight because I make bad decisions when I get home and it's just always like junk food around the house. Like I, I don't know how else to explain it. So I feel like my family continues to put me in situations I just can't be successful in, but I just, I have to get past all that. So, but you'll notice I always have fruit at, at work because work's my safe place. And I mean, it kind of gives me the, the sweetness that I need and I'm good. Oh man, that was good. All right, so that's Monday, lunch for today. 
uh, the first of my five soups and uh, 10 vegetable soup. There's a recipe link right here for that video. I'm going to link to the Instapot version. There's also a non-Instapot version too. Uh, they're both really good. All right, we'll see you on the next one. All right, it's another day, another lunch. So today in my uh, soup series, Everything's uh, Soup, uh, I've got one of my favorite soups. It's, uh, I'll do a, a shot over here in a minute, but it's my uh, creamy tomato soup. All right, you can see here I've got my tomato soup. I just put that little in a little glass bowl uh, and heat it up in the microwave for two minutes. And then, I normally don't do this, but I've got just a bowl of rice that I bought from Costco. It's just rice, brown rice, and that's it. And uh, I just, I love having this with brown rice. Uh, normally I make my own brown rice, it's very simple, but I didn't have it, so I always have these kind of, these little, uh, these rice ones here from Costco. They're just brown rice, there's nothing else in them, and they're in these little portions right here, these one serving portions, and you just throw them in the microwave for 90 seconds and they're done. Uh, I buy a box of six of these, what, I think so, it's six, and that will last probably six months. Like I don't normally use these, but I have them as a backup, because you know, I always have a plan. Uh, I've got my, my lunch box with me over here, so uh, if I get hungry after this, I've got a banana, which I probably won't get to, uh, and then I've got my uh, bottled water, so I'm ready to go. So uh, this soup is amazing. Uh, it's, uh, the creaminess comes from uh, cashew powder uh, that's reconstituted, uh, so because of the, it's the powder and not the actual cashews that I'm, that I'm adding to it, it doesn't have as much of the fat or all the fat that cashews do, do. so it's, it's a a much uh, lower fat version of using a tomato soup with cashews in it. Let's give it a try because I'm starving. Mm. It's so good. The reason I made uh, the tomato soup is because we wound up with going to one of those places. Again, I said this in the last time, but we go to these places like for 10 bucks, you buy all this produce, all you can carry, and it's all like going bad. Like it's a day or two from going bad. So they would just sell it at these cheap prices to get rid of it so it doesn't go bad. So we go there and I, I swear we had, I don't know, we, probably a hundred Roma tomatoes. So we started like, you know, throwing them in the, the boiling water to get the, the skin loose and taking the skins off. And we made like a huge pot of tomato soup uh, last weekend. And we've just frozen most of it. I put it in, you know, different containers and just froze them uh, for the rest of the year. And now I don't have to make for the rest of the year. Plus, I got to use those tomatoes, and I got them at a really good price. And with you know tomatoes being that cheap, uh, it makes the soup really affordable, like for anyone. So this and this soup, it's worth it. It's absolutely delicious. Oh man, there's nothing like tomato soup. Oh, it's so good. The rice is just brown rice. That's it. I actually like to dump the rice. I dump the soup right into the rice because the rice doesn't have any flavor in it. And then you just have like tomato soup flavored rice. Um, you can actually just jump the rice right into the soup too, which is something I might just do. Mmm, wow, it's really hot. This is delicious with the rice. Just gonna dump it right in. And now it's a one pot meal. All right, I think I just took this soup to the next level. Creamy tomato soup with rice. Oh man, let's give this a shot. I mean, I know it's good, so. Mmm. The rice gives it a nice texture. I have a link to a video right here where uh, I make this, so check that out. Uh, it's an amazing recipe and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm really enjoying this soup series. I mean, it's March 1st right now and it is, I mean, I don't ever remember being this cold in Phoenix for this long. It's literally been cold and dark in Phoenix since, the, uh, since November. Uh, and we've had very few sunny days, which is just bizarre. Uh, and we've had, a, normally we have a cold day and then we have a week of 70s and then maybe a cold day. And, and it's just, that's not the case. It's been like 30 something degrees every morning for months now. And I know with March, spring's coming and it's going to warm up really fast, but the cold is just, I'm not good with the cold. It was why I left New York in the beginning. So these soups, this all week of soups is perfect for me. All right, catch you on the next one. All right, it's another lunch and I'm continuing with the whole soup thing. All right, so today it's, Still cold here in Phoenix. So I've got my uh, like corn chowder here. This is the Sot Solution version of my uh, chunky corn chowder. And uh, let me do a little overhead shot so you can kind of see what's in it. Oh man, this looks good. Look at all that creamy, corny potato-ness. Mm. This is a beautiful bowl of chunky corn chowder. It is absolutely delicious and I can't wait to eat it. 
you can see the little chunks of vegetables in there, uh, the whole pieces of corn and some carrots there. You've got some uh, peppers and some uh, uh, greens. Oh, this looks delicious. So I can't wait to eat this. Of course, I've got my lunchbox right here and I've got uh, something to drink. I actually had two bananas in here and I ate both of them because I was starving uh, in my last block. And then I've got a, uh, an orange, a sumo orange because they're still in season for another three or four weeks. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to that today. I might eat that at home. So, all right, let's check out this soup. I made this last night and I made enough for the week. And holy smoke, it was so good. Look at that chunkiness. Like, look how, look at that. that that's a, a really chunky corn chowder. And most of that chunkiness comes from whole pieces of potatoes um, and uh, the corn and the veggies. I've got, uh, uh, here it's hard to see, but if you look over here, you can see a lot of more red. Uh, I've got carrots in here and peppers and uh, poblanos. Uh, so all of that stuff is just kind of diced up and, and you know, not blended. So. I mean, you could blend it and have it corn, uh, have it smooth, but I just I love all these chunks. Mmm. Oh, smoke. So good. I can get this cord out of the way. Oh, man, this is so good. All right. I am enjoying this. I put five cups of cauliflower rice in here, and I've got uh, eight cups of corn and uh, three, three cups of potatoes and a bunch of other veggies in here. So the cauliflower rice with all the carrots and the peppers and, uh, you know, the poblano and all that stuff, to me, this is close enough to a 50. It's a starch solution dish for sure. So maybe it's more 60, 40, but it's perfect for starch solution. Still one of my favorite soups. I'm gonna put a link to that uh, video right here where I show you how to make this. Um, it's a great soup for meal prep because it tastes good all week long when you eat it, right? For lunch, when you reheat it. I mean, just look at all that stuff on there. Look how chunky that is. That is just so much vegetables. These are the colors of health right here, right? I mean, I know I say that all the time, but I mean, all our food looks so good. One of the great things about eating plant-based is there's so many opportunities to eat from the rainbow, right? I mean, there's just so many colors in nature that you can use uh, for plant-based meals. So people say, you know, you're a vegan. Like, aren't you limiting yourself? And it's just the opposite. Like, I'm not eating the same four meats with three or four side dishes, you know, potatoes or rice over and over again, right? I'm eating something different every day. I mean, how often, you know, when I was a meat eater, how often did I make beautiful homemade soups? Um, never. And I got my uh, water bottle here, so I'm ready to go. All right, I'm gonna finish up this bowl of soup. It's a pretty ambitious bowl, but you know what they say, go big or go home. <laughs> Chunky corn chowder, so good. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, we're back for another lunch. Uh, today, one of my very early recipes uh, that I made as a vegan, and it's my uh, lentil vegetable soup. Um, let me give you an overview real quick and you can see what I've got going on here. Yeah, you can see here how good that looks. Uh, look at all that. You've got all those vegetables in there. You can see the, the lentils all in there, the red lentils, which are now yellow. Um, you've got some green, the celery, there's the carrots. This looks amazing. Oh, can't wait to eat this. All right, so it's really simple. You can make this in the Instant Pot or in the, the cooktop. I just made this in the cooktop because it only takes 20 minutes. Um, but, you know, it's just a, a pound of a cup of lentils and then a bunch of veggies and uh, a bay leaf, a few seasonings, and that's it. And it gives me the feel of having, remember the, the, the Campbell's chicken noodle soup where you would have the, that kind of salty soup base with those pieces of chicken in it? It's got that flavor, that kind of salty base, uh, but of course there's no chicken, but it, the lentils gives you the, the protein and the, you know, the texture. One of my favorite soups. Absolutely delicious. Mmm, so good. And when my mom comes over, whenever she comes and stays with me, this is her favorite. She asks me for this all the time, my lentil soup. She loves this soup. I do too. It's light. It's not a heavy broth. It's really light. Um, but at the same time, it's, got a, it's loaded with veggies, right? Um, and the, the lentils just give you density to this. So uh, I feel like a combination of it really hits the spot but at the same time, it's not filling like a creamy soup. Mm. Mm. 
So we're back from spring break, and uh, the year is quickly coming to an end. So it's March 20th today. We have 60 days, and then the season's over. And then uh, I'll be done, <laughs> done with work. I won't get paid. <laughs> so in the summers, I don't get paid, of course, because I get paid for the year that I'm working. Um, people say, oh, teachers get paid for the summer. They do not. We get paid August or whatever we start, or July for me, through the end of May, and then we're not paid again, unless you want to get paid for the year. And then there's an option for that when you get hired, and they'll stretch out your paycheck, right? They'll just give you less money every two weeks, and then it, you'll have paychecks through the summer. So you'll continually get paid, but we don't get, we don't get paid for the summer. Um, that time is unpaid, however they do it. Uh, so that's kind of a misconception. If you have kids that like like that canned chicken noodle soup, if you give them this, they're gonna like it. It's the same taste, right? That lemony kind of salty taste. It's, it's just the same taste, really brothy. Mm. So good, guys. Having water at work, it's just a really big convenience for me. There's always plenty of coffee, which I don't drink. There's teas, which I don't drink. There's all sorts of beverages, but there is no water here, right? Like, unless you bring your own water, there's no water cooler or anything like that. There's a refrigerator, but nobody, like, it's not stuffed with, I don't go in the fridge anyway. I don't, I keep my lunch here, right? I take it home with me every day and I've got my water, so I never go into the fridge. But um, if you open it up in the, in the break room here for the, we have our own break room just for our department here. Uh, there's only like 10 of us, I think eight of us. Uh, we don't have, there's no bottled waters in there. There's just leftover cream cheese and the people who work here, they bring their lunch, their meat dishes and, you know, throw it in Tupperwares or whatever, or they're eating those lean cuisines, whatever. It's like this big and, you know, it's like there's so little food in there. I don't know how they aren't starving, you know, an hour later. Uh, so having my own water, I mean, it's a necessity. All right. My lentil vegetable soup, one of my favorites, one of my earliest videos. That's soup for today. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, it's Friday, it's the end of the week. You can tell because the kids are like so ready to like get out of here. Uh, I've got one of my favorite soups today and some water. Uh, this is my white bean and uh, Swiss chard soup. Um, this came about because we grew a lot of Swiss chard last year. Uh, there was just, this table is wobbly. There was just so much of it, uh, and we needed something to do with it. So this soup is the answer. And we went through every bit of that Swiss chard as that tree, as those bushes kept producing and made a lot of soup. I've got the door open, so let's see if it's too loud because we're right on a major road. Oh, I'm going to show you the soup right here. You can take a look at it. Uh, it looks amazing. I mean, look at all that greens, all that uh, Swiss chard there, and you can see some of the pasta there, and you can see the white beans right there, uh, the carrots and the vegetables. Oh, man, and it smells so good. I can't wait to eat this. Look how big that pasta is. Those were just tiny stuffed shells when I put them in there, and they really puffed up. So, I ah, can't wait to eat this. Mmm. So good. Holy smoke. Oh, the corn. I can just, like, taste the corn in this. It's delicious. So good, guys. It feels like it's been a long week. Uh, it's the first week back from spring break. Uh, it's March 24th. So uh, we're doing the last quarter right now of school, and we're in it. So, I mean, we're on the countdown to the end of the school year. We got uh, 48 days or something of actual school days, and then it's over. And then I'm done working <laughs> and done getting paid. Uh, so uh, that's coming. And I got a lot of certification exams to take over the summer for things I've taught this year. I need to take the same test that the kids have to take. Uh, so, you know, I don't have to, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, plus I've got college and all that coming up in the summer. It's been an amazing week. So this soup here, it's not made in the Instant Pot, but you can make it in the Instant Pot if you want. Uh, but uh, you just need to make it long enough for the pasta to cook uh, in the water. So that's really the, the most important part of it. This uh, is really satisfying because it get, gives you the, it's a whole meal, right? Like it, the pasta and the beans give you the starch. Uh, all the veggies in there give you the, the non starchy vegetables, and it's a very filling soup. But at the same time, it's really light. It's like my lentil soup, my lentil vegetable. It's just really light. So a week of lunches, all soups, and 
some amazing opportunities year round, right? It doesn't have to be a winter thing. It's starting to warm up, but I, I'm still loving soup. And just so comforting when you eat these, right? Just the, the brothiness and, and the, the different veggies, like just really comforting. All right, that's our video for today. Uh, five uh, soups, a week of lunch, uh, teacher edition, all soups. Uh, I kind of like this theme ones. These are kind of fun, right? Uh, please hit that like button. Show us some love. What's not to like? Uh, hit that subscribe button and become part of the plant-based dads family. And you'll get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Tuesday. And leave a comment below. Are you eating soups in the winter? Uh, have you made any soups? So what are your favorite soups? Maybe I should make some of those. Uh, these five, these are my top. These are the ones that I go to. And really, these are the ones that you know, like, I make if people are coming over and all that. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.